I see a lot of wealthy people, wealthy on paper. Uh, techie guys, hmm. software companies, uh, rich people in different industries. Nobody feels so. Nobody feels even remotely close to as wealthy as real estate people. Hmm. <laughs> your houses, your yeah. cars, your planes. Like, why do real estate? I think people- it's like cash flow over valuation. That's uh-huh. the yeah. I mean, because like it's the best investment class. That's. <laughs> Not really. You see, of course, at least today the bankers also have learned the value of real estate because that's the only asset that can't go up in smoke. Hmm. At least, even if they have something to hold on to, which they can, if they hold on longer, they'll actually make money out of it rather than lose money from the whatever they have to recover. You know, Uncle, that is what scares me most about real estate. Like, if I were to put five real estate developers in a room. The older they are, the more they will be forceful about this. But every single one of them will believe real estate prices can never go down, whatever happens. <laughs> no, no, no. See, it it depends country to country, population mm. to population. Mm. Now, take cut and just come to India. Mm. With the type of population that you have in this country, and there is still, according to me, a tip of the iceberg. There's, you know, there's still lot more urbanization that has to happen. Mm. Lot more people who are aspirationally wanting to buy a home. Yes, there have been periods. Uh, real estate always has its periods where suddenly price goes up too high, too fast. Then there's a plateau, and that plateau continues for a little while, where you, price neither goes down, doesn't correct itself, doesn't go up, or if somebody wants. That's why we say real estate is illiquid. You want to sell? There's not too many buyers. What is the, what is the demographic? And then change? with the inflation, it goes up again. But with the type of people that we have in our country, the type of job creation that's happening, the type of industrialization we are talking about, and and we are seeing it real. See now, in the initial days when we got into this business, who was I selling to? Who was my buyer? It was people who were retired, who had their provident fund, or who had sold some property somewhere in a larger city in the bigger city and came here with that little extra and wanted to buy a house. And then the the transactions were few and far between. Just this morning, I read that the maximum housing sales have happened in the last quarter. Yeah. Why is that? It's only because there is their demand is very real. Can I make a counter yeah. argument? Make a counter argument. What if? The demographic. See, let's say India's population is X. Mm. To retain that population, every couple has to give birth to two point one children. Okay. Replenishment rate. Forty years ago, we were giving birth to four, five children per couple. Today, that number is two point two, two point three. In in many states, it's under two point one. The immediate effect of that will be. At any given point of time, instead of having four generations looking for housing, we'll start to have three, because even the women who are giving birth are giving birth at thirty-five instead of twenty. Correct. Tomorrow, if we get to that point where India, like Japan, has a has a large percentage of our population which is older, and there are lesser young people coming in, and older people, I would assume, need lesser real estate. Combined with that, that somehow we buck the urbanization pattern that we have witnessed in China because of work from home and a bunch of different things. Don't these, don't these risks need to be factored in into that dialogue of real estate will always go up? Yeah, yeah. That but that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen in very really soon. Know. Today, not tomorrow. In thirty, forty, maybe fifty, sixty, seventy. That's years. consumption. Huh? I mean, not necessarily just real estate. It's See, you know, literally like in Japan, everything. Then, right? but I think you know, as people are becoming more affluent, they're consuming more energy, they're consuming more FMCG because that is essentially attributable to the fact that they can afford it now. But everything is like I want a better quality See, of yeah, life. See, sir, right? now as of time, now the home Nikhil, is included. The thing is, there is a shortage, real shortage. Hmm. There's a real need. Hmm. And by the time we have that, like it's just like our infrastructure, the the population has grown, the business has grown, the development has grown, and our infrastructure is always trying to play the catch-up game. You now look at our roads, look at our traffic. It's not that infrastructure hasn't improved; it has, but the traffic has improved that much more exponentially. 
So it's similarly for us. You see, there is a real demand. And that real demand, it'll go. That is why just before we started this conversation, I was telling Drupa, I think always what we need to have is an eye on who is my customer. Hmm. Who can afford me? What type of pricing they can afford me? And that has to be from the mass. If that is my product and that is where I'm targeting, I'll have enough business to go around. Now, if I'm just doing very luxury housing, okay, that also I can do. But I should be happy to just be very content with that niche market where I'll do lesser revenue, lesser business. It's not that the business will not happen. It's not that there are no takers for that. There will be takers for that, but in a smaller measure. Okay, the satisfaction is like, you know, is just doing something very, very unique, something special and just keeping it only as a collector's item for a few people, or whether I want to do a product which is for the mass. Sorry, if I may just jump in on that. Um, See, just prior to COVID, Mm -hmm. there was this whole thing of this, what you were saying, right? The new generation doesn't want to own a car, they're going to rent a car with Uber. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to live in hotel rooms, it's going to be Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So there was this whole discussion and debate about uh, whether people will buy homes or only rent homes, right? And now you know, fast forward to 2023 or 2024, we're seeing decadal highs. We've not seen this kind of demand ever. One reason, of course, is urbanization. What what my Arifan uncle was saying, right now, urban cities are at 35% urbanized. Like 35% mm. of the population lives in urban cities, which is about 480 million people. Mm. This is expected to go up to 40% mm. by some 20, 30 or so, which is 600, which is, sorry, Yeah, about 600 million people. Mm. Like, where are all those homes getting built? Indian developers put together, probably put out in the top eight cities about 450,000 to 500,000 units. Mm. But you're talking about 120 million people coming into the cities. Mm. The demand and the macroeconomics are so favorable to real estate. I agree there is demand. I'm trying to predict the curve, the future curve of the demand? Are we looking forward five years and saying there's demand or are we looking forward 50 and saying there's demand? I mean, I think the volumes of the demographic is so high that mm. it's multi-decades, right? It's, mm. I don't think yeah. it's like a five-year situation. If we were, let's say, in a much smaller country where you were talking about, I don't know, million, two million, five million people being the population, mm. I think it's a different discussion. <laughs> when we're talking about one point, whatever, seven billion mm. and such a you know, only a small percentage at the upper pyramid and such a huge volume like this tidal wave that's moving upwards and, you know, our aspirational want a better life, are moving to bigger cities. It's not physically possible to even just build, you know, that type of capacity where you would, where supply would outpace the demand. Yeah. So the time it takes to just put up an apartment or like get the approvals and all that is like, mm. you know, five, seven years when you talk about buying the land, getting all the approvals, then three years to build it and then finally sell it and, you know, all of that. 